During World War II, Poland surprisingly declared war on Japan in 1941, yet the Japanese government shockingly rejected their declaration, leading to an unexpected alliance where Japan aided the Poles in spying on their own ally, Germany, and collaborated with Polish intelligence throughout the war. During World War II, when Poland declared war against Japan, the Japanese surprisingly refused to accept it, claiming that the Poles were only declaring war under pressure from the United Kingdom. But despite this, the Japanese and Polish maintained a friendly relationship, with Japan even assisting the Poles against their own Axis ally, Germany. During the late 19th century, a Japanese officer named Yasumas Fukushima traveled through Poland and was deeply moved by the tragedy of Poland's partitions, inspiring the creation of a popular song called The Memory of Poland that garnered sympathy for the Polish cause in Japan. Despite being on opposing sides during World War II, Poland and Japan maintained a peculiar relationship with Poland's embassy in Tokyo remaining open until German pressure forced its closure in 1941 and Polish agents being provided with Japanese passports to freely move throughout German-occupied Europe. Even after Poland declared war against Japan, the cooperation between the two countries continued, with Polish agents still using Japanese passports and intelligence services exchanging information. This bizarre Polish-Japanese war finally came to an end after 16 years when the People's Republic of Poland signed an agreement with Japan to restore formal relations. During World War II, there was a strange belief that President FDR knew about Japan's plan to attack Pearl Harbor and allowed it to happen. But this myth is illogical because FDR wanted to fight Germany, not Japan. The U.S. ended up in a war against Germany because Hitler illogically declared war on America, despite having nothing to gain and everything to lose from adding the world's wealthiest country and greatest industrial powerhouse to his list of enemies. Without Hitler's irrational decision, Congress would likely not have declared war on Germany as they had not attacked America. Additionally, even if a Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor could have led to war against Germany, FDR's alleged goal of getting America into the war could have been achieved if U.S. forces had been prepared, avoiding the unnecessary loss of American lives. The U.S. Navy could have ambushed the Japanese and sunk their fleet before they could launch a single plane, and the mere presence of the fleet near Hawaii would have been enough evidence of Japan's hostile intent to justify war. After Japan surrendered in 1945, most military personnel obeyed the orders to surrender, but a stubborn minority, due to lack of communication or their belief in the Bushido Code, refused to surrender and became known as Japanese holdouts. Some Japanese holdouts believed in Japan's mission to free fellow Asians from European colonialism, while others suffered from post-traumatic stress and acted irrationally, and there were also those who were simply stubborn and refused to accept defeat. Most holdouts eventually surrendered or died, but a few managed to evade capture or death for extended periods of time. Captain Sakai Oba, a Japanese soldier who survived W.E. Foeing's biggest bonsai charge, led a group of 46 soldiers and 160 civilians into the jungles of Saipan after the U.S. Marines beat back the Japanese defenders. Captain Sakai Oba, known as the Fox, baffled U.S. military commanders with his uncanny ability to hide his men and evade capture, launching surprise attacks and undermining the assumption that Saipan was fully pacified. Despite numerous attempts to track him down, Oba's guerrilla tactics kept him one step ahead, 
earning him his clever nickname. Captain Sakai Oba, who continued fighting even after Japan surrendered, finally ended his holdout when the Americans sent a Japanese general into the jungle to reason with him. Yamakage Kufuku and Matsudo Linsoki, two Japanese machine gunners defending Iwo Jima, managed to survive for years by hiding in tunnels during the day and sneaking out at night to scavenge food and supplies from the American garrison. In Iwo Jima, two American corporals unknowingly gave a lift to Yamakage Kufuku and Matsudo Linsoki, assuming they were Chinese laborers hitchhiking, only to later discover that they were Japanese soldiers who had been hiding out for years with a secret stash of supplies. Yogi Berra, the baseball legend, not only had an impressive career with the New York Yankees, but also took a break from the sport to serve in the U.S. Navy during World War II, where he bravely fought on D-Day and escaped injury. During D-Day, Yogi Berra and his crewmates mistakenly shot down an American airplane that flew too low, but luckily the pilot survived and was rescued by their boat. Before his rise as a controversial comedian, Lenny Bruce, also known as Leonard Alfred Schneider, bravely enlisted in the U.S. Navy during World War II, serving aboard the USS Brooklyn and participating in combat missions in the Atlantic and Mediterranean. During his time in the Navy, Lenny Bruce found a unique way to get out of military service by pretending to be gay, which he claimed was a result of his shipmates giving him abnormal attention and becoming attracted to some of them. This scheme worked, and Lenny was sent for a psychiatric evaluation due to his homosexual drive. The U.S. Navy's evaluation of Lenny Bruce revealed that he had the potential to engage in homosexual acts if surrounded by men aboard a ship, which the Brooklyn's captain deemed socially dangerous and recommended his separation from the Navy or assignment to a shore installment with heterosexual relations available. During World War II, Hitler became fixated on superweapons, leading to the development of the VE-3 cannon, a gun capable of firing hundreds of rounds an hour over an extremely long distance, with the intention of destroying London. Unaware of the V-3 cannon program, the Allies mistook the construction activity for a potential launching base for V-2 rockets, leading to frequent bombing that disrupted construction and forced the Germans to abandon parts of the complex. It wasn't until the site was heavily damaged in a raid that the Allies realized the true threat it posed and how fortunate London had been to destroy it. In the midst of the devastating losses suffered by bomber crews during W. Tours, there were incredible tales of survival, including those of airmen who miraculously lived after plummeting from the sky without a parachute. RAF Flight Sergeant Nicholas Alchemade, a rear gunner in an Avro Lancaster bomber, jumped out of his burning plane without a parachute falling 18,000 feet to the ground and miraculously surviving. Flight Sergeant Nicholas Alkamade miraculously survived a three-mile fall from his burning bomber, landing in a stand of pine trees and soft snow, with only a strained leg as his sole injury. Despite initial disbelief from the Gestapo, his survival story made him a celebrity, and he went on to live a remarkable life after the war. And believe it or not, there are even more incredible tales of people surviving falls from even greater heights without a parachute. Alan Maggi, a B-17 ball turret gunner, 
miraculously survived falling 22,000 feet without a parachute after his plane was hit by flak and caught fire during a raid on Saint-Nazaire in France. Alan Magee, an American airman, miraculously survived a four-mile fall without a parachute during WR5, sustaining multiple injuries but ultimately making it out alive. In a crazy twist of fate, Lieutenant Colonel Ivan Chisov fell an astonishing 23,000 feet without a parachute, survived serious injuries, and then unbelievably returned to fighting the Nazis just three months later. During the planning for the D-Day invasion, Allied forces devised an unconventional weapon called the Great Panjandrum, which consisted of a drum filled with explosives and attached to rocket-propelled wheels, aiming to clear obstacles on the landing beaches, however, in reality, it ended up being a hilariously ridiculous weapon. Despite being developed in secrecy, the great Panjandrum's flaws were exposed when it was tested on a crowded beach, with rockets malfunctioning and the device careening off course, even launching rockets at the unsuspecting observers. The great Panjandrum, an innovative weapon straight out of Looney Tunes, had a disastrous final demonstration when it went out of control, shedding live rockets and sending admirals, generals, and a cameraman running for cover. The Battle of Karantzabes in 1788 was a farcical debacle where an Austrian army killed thousands of its own soldiers, panicked, and fled without even encountering the enemy all because some hussars got drunk on schnapps from gypsies they stumbled upon while scouting for the enemy. In a bizarre turn of events, a simple brawl over schnapps escalated into a chaotic battle as drunken hussars were tricked into fleeing by a comrade's prank, causing a ripple effect of panic and confusion that ultimately led to the Austrian army's downfall.